Good morning, traders, and welcome to the uh, Thursday edition of the Pro Trader, Trader webinar series. Uh, this week, all week, we've had uh, professional traders. Uh, yesterday, you saw um, a J Trader um, actually for two and a half hours, 9.15 or so until, um, uh, what was it, 11.45 or something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, nice, nice, uh, very thorough webinar on stocks. Uh, J Trader uh, is one of the traders that comes in uh, every Wednesday, right? Now today we have Scott Pulsini, a futures trader. You guys may have heard of Scott. I'll introduce you here in just a second. Uh, but uh, we have him every Thursday. Okay, this is part of the bookmap education you get uh, when you subscribe to Global Plus. Okay, there's an educational course. You get access to the daily advanced webinars for one hour every day, every weekday at 10 a.m. Uh, and then you have live trading with Scott and J Trader, uh, so two days a week. So live analysis and trading from a professional and how they uh, read order flow, their setups, and how they optimize entries and exits. There's a lot here to go over. So it's really great stuff. We feel very fortunate to have Scott, uh, his background. He's been trading for over 20 years and during uh, the years of 2002 to 2005, Scott was responsible for trading about 10% of the S&P E-mini uh, futures volume. Uh, he was featured in uh, Brett Steenbarger's book on, uh, on trading psychology, uh, and Scott now focuses focuses on trading both equities and futures. He's an expert scalper uh, and has an innate ability to quickly read order flow and volume within price patterns. Uh, here's uh, Scott's contact information. Okay, you've got his website, you've got his email, Twitter account, he has a trading room here. If you're interested, you can click on the link. I'm going to put all these links into the chat for you in just a second, so you can, you know, click direct, click directly from the link. Uh, he has an educational course on our Bookmap Marketplace, and there's special affiliate deals you can get from Scott uh, with this link here. Again, I'll put all these links into the chat. Uh, I need to go over the disclosures and then we'll turn it right over to Scott. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. The goal here is not to shadow the trader. The goal here is to learn in the live environment from a professional trader. Risk disclosure, uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should uh, consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, good morning, uh, Alan, Tom, David, uh, and uh, Doug and others. Uh, I'll get to some of your questions uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the chat there, but let me turn it over to Scott so he can uh, start with his presentation. All right, Bruce, you hear me? Yes. All right. Just, just type into my room here. I got a position on, and there's new buy ice coming in, so I can now trail this. I'll go over this here in a second, but you can see this big buy. You got my screen, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. How about mission yeah. control? Mission control coming up. There's there it is. All right. All right. Um, so you can see this bias coming in right here. It's threshold, threshold is 800, meaning that's what I pay attention to, to take trades, anything less than that, I, I pretty much ignore. We shorted, um, let me draw this zone first because I'm able to trail my stop now based on this new setup and I may add to this trade now. Um, let's just get this in here. So that, let's see where this started here. The way I draw my zones, all you gotta do is come up to this little cursor guy, come to where this spiked. So, and then incorporate all the prices that happen in that spike. So that was basically up to, and I already forgot how to use that tool, Bruce. So I'll do it here in a second. Um, this is kind of a weird tone here. Let's see where that ended. It's probably still coming in here. Right about there. S&P 723 buy. 
All right, so you can see this buy ice just keeps coming in here. S&P 700 sell. All right, so first let me trail myself. So I'm gonna go four points above this last zone here, um, the top of this. I'm gonna show you why in a second. Again, I'm just trying to get situated here. Uh, this is say 1150. We'll go uh, 1550. You can see my stop was at 22. I'm gonna move that down to 1550. Make sure I do it on my other accounts because I always forget and then I get smoked. All right. All right, so I may add to this trade now. So what, what I took, what, what, let's back up here quickly. So let me, I'll just show you here first. Again, this is happening right now. So, I'm, and I'm on, on about two hours sleep. So this is, uh, mine's not working as quickly as usual. Anyway, we had um, big bias right here. You can see this. Uh, it was all close to a thousand. That's this zone here. We broke below it. Um, I go an ATR on a five minute. S&P 700 three buy. So I can hear. There's more buy ice here. Let me, let me get all this situated first. This is basically one big zone now, I think. Or is this the same zone? No, it's the same zone. All right, it's coming in again here though. So ice is gonna be really right or really wrong here. We saw this yesterday at the close where ICE tried to catch this, the move down, and they got crushed, and it, it broke like 20 points in the globe. I posted that on Twitter. This is the exact same thing that was happening yesterday. So, um, so anyway, I'm looking for an ATR move below the zone, retest, fail, and I'll add to this trade. And ATR is average true range. It's about four and a half, 4.3, four points. So we're looking at four and a half points below the zone. That's a five minute. You can use that, or you can use 20% of the hourly ATR to decide your zones. I'm assuming most people on here have seen my prior webinars. Um, the ATR for the hourly is 10. Uh, this is too volatile for two points. So I'm using, I'm gonna use four and a half points. So meaning for this to be a, a valid broken ice setup. So broken ice is when the buy ice tries to stop the move. It moves, it needs to move four and a half points below to, to verify that's broken ice. If it retests, fails, half an ATR, I'll initiate another short and then I'll trail my I mean, I'll put my second short uh, stop at the same spot where I just trailed down from. Um, so anyway, what I did this first time was, hopefully the market will let up for here for a second so I can explain this, that would be nice of it. Um, this came down here, that was this zone here. We moved an ATR below, we retested, and you can see where I shorted half an ATR below that, which was about two points, two and a quarter points. I shorted the first time, my stop went four points above this zone, so I put it at 22, right? Now this zone just came in, new ice. This is getting, now this is considered broken ice too. We just moved four points below the low of this, you can see here. So the normal routine is these zones will break, especially if it's against the paper, it will come back and retest the zone um, just because paper controls the show, paper meaning the big money, the funds, hedge funds, quant funds, they will get it back to this area to cover their trades and then them covering their trades cost of the next wave down. So that's the theory, it's not a theory, it's what I used to do as a big trader. I, I've, that's what other big traders do. Just imagine when you're caught in a trade, whether if it's a one lot or a hundred lot or a thousand lot, if you're wrong and you don't stop out, you're praying it comes back and you're saying, I promise I'll just scratch and wait for my, just come back so I can scratch. And that's what they do. When it comes back, they'll put their offers in and it gets filled as, as many as they can that they got run over on. And if it starts to move away, then they have to chase it and that causes the next move down. So that's the, that's the whole principle behind that. So anyway, if this retest fails, I will add to this trade now. <clears throat> um, you know, I have to rest six points above this, four points above. So that would be, a, yeah, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just making sure because you gotta, you gotta adjust your size to how much you're risking. And in my room, we use a, um, a risk. Let's see if I can find that for you. Just to give you a quick look at that. Uh, one second. We use a risk. Zero shot cell one five zero. Let's see here. Oh, let's see it now. Oh, 
example, I was just going to show you guys. It's basically where you can put your risk in. Um, the whole trade room has it, and you can decipher by um, how many points you need to risk, what kind of size you can put on, and that's the most crucial part of trading because you don't want to be risking more than you shouldn't be losing more than one and a half, two percent of your account size on every trade. So I'll see if I can find that here when this slows down. But uh, this is not retested. So this is the one of the issues. If you do wait for a retest, that's a conservative trade. Um, if it doesn't retest, then you're you're not going to put the trade on, right? So that's what you have to risk. You so see, you have to decide as a trader, hey, am I going to play first break of the zone? Like some of the guys in my trade room I was just watching, they played first break of the zone up here. It did retest, but this one may not retest. So you can either play first break or you wait for the retest. That's a more conservative and sure entry, but it may not come back is the problem, right? So anyway so this was 600 more ice 479 so this area combined is another basically another zone right here um so I, i'm actually going to draw this in just because this plus this will be threshold and it's close enough together uh, what am i doing here again forgive me i'm about two hours sleep my air conditioning broke i had to go to a hotel and then the air conditioning there was rattling all night so i got no sleep it's pleasant. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to so let's see what happens here. I'm going to cover three of these for right now, just because into that other zone, and I'm going to see if this can retest this upper zone, and then I'll I'll let it do it. If this breaks this retest, then I'll just put the I'll put that trade back on plus another trade. This newest zone. I, I don't usually do these convoluted zones like this, but you can see this spike. Here is basically close enough together. And that's this zone here. So I just I just know this market and I know we're gonna come back up here. So I can put that three lot back and I want to come back up there just because it's how it trades, because it's impossible for this market to go down. <clears throat> um, unless it's overnight, of course. So let's let's go to the basics, right? So this is what we do in the trade room every morning. We go through these the longer time frame charts to figure out and come figure out where these markets are and come up with a thesis, right? So what is happening here in ES is we've we built balance here, tried to break down, that failed, tried to break out, held the high volume node, which you need to hold to remain bullish, tried it again, held it, tried it again, held it, but we just could not break out to the upside. And then all we did is we formed more balance, then we formed more balance. And then yesterday, after the Fed, we tried to break down. What do we hold? The high volume note of this, right? And not only do we hold that, we put in a buying tail, which is instant rejection. So that is bullish, but but it's been below all of this trade. So just imagine how many traders are long here that are wrong, right? So you don't want to be buying high volume nodes percentage wise. The odds of this stopping right here is very low because you have that's a different scenario than if this balances way up here and it moved down into there, then yeah. But here you have these guys puking. Usually it goes right through this HVN. It held the first time, but I have a feeling if this comes down, there's not a feeling, if this comes down and this this gets through this tail, it's adios to ES for now. Um, it should be a nice extended move. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is uh, some huge quad witching expirations, like $1.7 trillion of options are coming off. Like this, these markets are gonna be crazy and this could be the catalyst for, for the huge move that's um, pending. So right now it's kind of iffy, uh, you know, I'm obviously leaning short because of this. This is the most current thing, but it is holding at this HVN with the buying tail. So I could see this just chopping around here for a while and then finally doing that. It could do that. This is still bearish. It could retest the bottom, which it just did and fail. It can come all the way up to the high volume node and fail. So it's still short term bearish in my view. If it gets above that, then I'll be looking to buy until then I'm looking to sell because this is the most current structure. So that's where we are in ES. I'm gonna wait here for a retest of this zone and then decide what I'm gonna do. Like I told you, this is what ES does. It just never can just flush, only overnight. MQI sell 150. Here's the retest. MQI stops by 150. So I'm not trading in Q either way. I don't like where this is. This is the least looking, least bearish looking market out of the three that I follow. Um, you can see here. We, so markets are trading one of two ways. They're trading in balance or 
conviction. Let's try to break down conviction, fail breakdown. Balance, conviction, balance, conviction, right? So meaning move away and then move away, our traders puking that we're taking positions. So this was a balance. This was a balance, right? The Fed came out, we broke down, where do we hold? The HV into this balance looks just like the ES, right? Put in a buying tail. Now we're back to basically the HVN of this. Yes, you could short this, but this doesn't look as good as the ES. Yes, we're still below that balance that I just showed you. So I will look to short this market once we can get through the high volume node of this here and this tail. And then the next area down, what I'll be watching is down here. That's when I want to short this market. Otherwise, if this does this, I will look for longs. But I, that's, I don't want to trade in this area right now because it's NASDAQ is choppy as, as it is already. So I'm not interested in uh, trading that in that area. Russell looks as bearish, or if not more bearish, you can see here. We put in a balance here. Balance is just back and forth trade, right? Traders placing bets. Then we tried to break down. What did it retest? The high volume node. And then we built more balance below balance that this thing goes a little lower, it's in big trouble, right? There's not a lot of structure. You got this guy here, but again, is this gonna hold up this market where all these traders have to puke? Probably not. This is probably the next area down, this balance here. And if not all the way, and you can see here, this is basically one huge balance that might come right back down to the bottom here. So that's what I'm, that's my thesis right now. <coughs> so the way I trade is I come up with thesis based on structure. Then we go to the, we look at a couple other things. So I'll go over here. Shockingly, ES came back into that zone. So let's keep an eye on this. So what I'll do here, because this did come in below this one, I'm going to wait for a break of this zone, and then I will get in aggressively below here. I'm not going to short on a on a uh, move away from this zone because you still got to get through this. So again, I have a half position on already. If this comes and breaks through here, then I will get short. If not, I'll let them come stop me out. Um, so some of the other stuff that we look at to base our decisions, number two, well, the main driver of all my trading is the book map volume, right? But I wait for book map volume and important that areas that I deem important, right? So the other area that I deem important or the other things that I deem important are market profile, right? We'll get here to these, we call these Ludwig levels here. And there's also something interesting happening here that I'll go over in a second. Um, this is ES. So what we do here is we take a look at market profile. Most people are familiar with market profile. I use the, the time, uh, time price opportunities, not volume, because I see enough of volume in my regular trades. I like a different look. So these are just, this was yesterday's trade. You can see this was the Fed meeting and it failed. This, again, this is just yesterday when I put it together, you'll, if you're confused, you'll understand. So we opened up up here. We went right through this prior composite value area, through straight through this one, couldn't hold in this one. And then this morning we tried to test it and then we're back into this one, right? We've already tested the upper edge. So I'm expecting this. And then once we get in here, finally, again, I think we're gonna come down into here. And then that. if for some reason something changes and we get out of this one and then back into this one, we get above all this, then I'm going to change my thesis. But right now, I'm leaning short based on the structure I just showed you and market profile. So let's get this normal looking. You can see it was a big wide range day, right? So the way I merge these zones is I go through this every time. I'll go through this quickly because I know this is kind of more of a general webinar where people might have not seen this before. So these are days individual days, right? And this is just 70% of the trade, 70% of the trade. If they overlap more than 50% prior days, I will merge them together, right? And you can see inside, 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 merge all three, right? And then you draw a composite value area instead of a normal value area. Like for instance, the day before yesterday, this was just the daily value area. 70% of the trade traded inside of that value area. And the point of control is what price that traded the most inside the value area. It's very simple once you understand what you're looking at. So I'm going to merge these back so you can see how I did that. And then what I do is I draw a composite profile, 
right? That's stronger than a daily profile. And then we had this individual day, and then yesterday you can see this was a wide range day because of the Fed meeting. And you can see, I'm sorry, that's point of control, this and this, and this is where we close, right? Um, so I'm not gonna merge this because I'll merge this 50%, this is kind of confusing too, but just for right now, just understand I'm not merging. Just know I'm not merging this day with these prior profiles yet. Uh, after today, I'll probably merge in the next two. Uh, I don't want to get into that right now. But anyway, what I'm watching in these are these prior composites and how it reacts, right? We tried to get in this one, rip back into this one. We did trade back up into here, and now we're balancing. Are we going to, meaning it's not like a balance area like I was talking about earlier, but we're just going to see here on the edge, on the ledge. Are we going to fall back into here and then into here? That's what I'm playing for. And then I wait for my real-time volume to confirm that. Let's see where we're at here. It's the usual ES nonsense. It's always got a spike back. And that's why I got out of three there, because I knew that was going to happen. I had a strong suspicion. So anyway, we pop back into this zone. This was the original zone. This was the second. No, I'm sorry. So here you go. So this was the original zone that we shorted. This came in while we were on, and then this final zone. It came all the way back up to the top, the bottom of this first zone. And we're failing. I'm going to wait till we get back below here to do anything, and something else is probably going to come in before that anyway, so that I can place a new trade based on the new information. But we're still short for now. Um, any questions before I move on, Bruce? Uh, no, you, you already Go. covered it. Yeah, never mind. Oh, I want to go through the things that we look at. So market profiles and one of the other factors. And then we also, I also use, this is a new addition, I use Ludwig levels. They're very, very powerful. You can go to the website um, and see what they're all about. But I had a, I had a student that uh, I met her last year and he started using these on top of the book map volume um, SI indicator signals that I, in my course, and he took off and made, he's made a couple, almost a couple million bucks in the last four months. So he swears by these levels. So I started watching him and the whole room uses them now. And they're just, you can see they're just awesome. Um, you know, again, in context, you're not, I'm not, I don't use anything in a vacuum, um, but when this agrees with my other thesis stuff, then it's, it's even better, right? So this is what I use. So this is, this is interesting as well. So this is cumulative volume. Bookmap has the same type of feature on their, on their thing. It's like the, the very first indicator you see when you get book map. But you can see here, we look uh, with this cumulative volume, you want to look for divergences, right? So meaning all this is showing you is the aggressive buyers and sellers. So if it spikes up, it means guys were taking offers, right? Meaning they were aggressive buyers. If it spikes down, that means they were hitting bids, right? So what you can see here from the last time we were up here, we were at positive 4,000, meaning there were 4,000 more buyers than sellers, meaning more aggressive buyers. And so there's always an equal amount of buyers and sellers, but meaning there were 4,000 more aggressive uh, taking of offers at this area. And you can see now we return here and look at the divergence in the volume. Okay, this is not like a, a just a, um, you can just trade this by itself, but it's just good to see like everything else. So it's good to see, hey, there's net sellers versus the last time we were up here. Then you look at other stuff here. You got the day, this is the daily value area. What's the daily value area? It's one standard deviation from VWAP. So if this holds and then breaks below this lug, this is gonna be this is gonna be the move that I was anticipating. For some reason it does not and goes higher, then I'll reassess. But we've got that going for us as well. So I look at that, I look at Ludwig levels. Again, if you're part of my room, you get discounts to those. If you come in there, I mean, I'll explain all that there. Um, the other thing we look at is what we call algo guy in my room. This and is just my cell one five zero. I just stopped out of this. I at least covered half of those. Um, so I will just reassess now. This buy ice was able to hold this for now, right? So it is what it is. I had I had a good trade on, and then buy ice decided to step up and hold the market. So if I get stopped out, I'll take a small loss. And I'll reassess and I'll wait for my new, new signal. I'm not going to be bullish this market yet in this area. Once if we move above like 42.25, then I'll be bullish. If not, I'm going to continue to look for 
bearish setups. It just didn't wasn't able to pierce through that time, right? Make sure I stop here too. Okay, I got it. Um, oh, so the other thing we look at is algo guys. So the, all this is, is an exponential moving average ribbon. I actually learned this from one of my students um, last year, and I, I'm very reluctant to add things to my training. Right, it's as simple as can be. It's volume structure. The two things that I use that are because they're very powerful after monitoring them for enough time, I said, yes, this, this is something that I can introduce to other traders. This is one of them. This is just a, um, this is an exponential moving average ribbon. It's a uh, default study on Thinkorswim. You can get a Thinkorswim account. You can put like a thing as low as a hundred bucks in there and get their access to their tools. Anyway, the way a lot of traders use this is the blue is a simple moving average ribbon band, which is different time periods. The red is longer time periods. So the way they use this is when the blue crosses above the red, it signals trending moves. The way uh, the guy that I learned this from is that he liked, he liked to play pullbacks into the red and then as it got above the blue, buy it. And you can see sometimes it doesn't work. So we don't, I don't trade this by itself, but I just use this to verify because you know a lot of algos are set to this stuff, the reversion of the mean and moving average stuff. So when this crosses and you want it, like for instance, if this does this and it can't pull one of the best setups I've seen for this is when the market moves above and it can't pull the blue above where you see space, once it gets back below, that's go time for the algos. And that's on top of my thesis. And then if I get the volume, then I just know everything's in my favor. I, but I don't trade. These are like check marks. Everything I look at is a check mark. I don't use one on its own. Even the, even the most powerful one, the book map SI indicator setups, I don't use by itself, right? I make sure that other things, I have at least a couple other check marks in my favor before I start taking trades off the volume. So my point is I don't, I have to have the volume. This is number one. But these other things, I don't have to have everything aligned to take the trade. If you do get everything aligned, then it's an A++ trade. But if I don't, I still will take the trade. For instance, like this, I'm, you know, I'm short. This isn't necessarily bullish yet, but it's trying to become bullish. But my point is I don't trade anything in a vacuum. All right, so that's that market. Um, let's cover some other ones now. I did not get stopped out to the tick, which that's shocking in itself, especially the way my last two days have gone. It's uh, in regular life, you figure out. Russell is 150 south. Exact tick back in here in gold where I was long from my webinar. Um, I got on this morning and just went over these markets and I put this long on and you can see this is the standard for me. Exact tick, stop out, right back up. So anyway, I still will take longs in gold here and I'll go over here. And see Net gas, I sell 157. Um, so let's, let's Let's go over this like I do in my trade room, right? So we'll, we'll bring up the longer term chart. We've been calling the sell off for weeks, waiting for this big move and it finally happened. <clears throat> so what happened here? From just from what I explained to you guys earlier, and you might sell one by one. You can see here, this was. Net the, gas, I sell 164. What is going up today is the net gas number. That's why. Hold on one second, guys, let me turn that off. Second here. All right. Um, so anyway, we've been waiting for the we've been waiting for this break for a while. We had the smaller balance. Actually, we had this bigger balance. We tried to break down, try to come back. What did we retest? The bottom of the balance, right? Then we built more balance. Then we built more balance below balance below below the big balance below the big balance. Finally broke. This was actually one big one. Tried to try to hold here temporarily, rip through, and I told the room like yesterday, this is the next stop down, either the top of this guy where this broke out from. There was 1,200 buy stops that day, or the high buying node, and you can see this is exactly where we came. My some of my favorite trades are extended moves right into important areas, and this is one of them. This is why now I want to flip to at least a temporary long in gold. Not that I'm bullish this market. But I think this could bounce. I think this can bounce back up to here and then maybe form balance again. And then, then actually when it finally gets through this guy, then it's it's going to be ugly. But I will take a long temporary long here. I tried it earlier and obviously came down and sat me out. I did actually have a nice profit in this, but I was getting on the webinar and I kind of lost track of it up here. So you can see where I got long here. And this was a almost 100 tick trade. And I just lost track of it. I would have covered at least um, one of them. I only had two on because of what I had to risk. But I, um, 
I missed this and they came all the way back and stopped me out. But I'm still looking for longs here. So if something pop, fires off while we're on this webinar, I will go long again. There's just been nothing as of right now. Um, Russell, I just heard something. Let's see what's going on here. Russell, my thresholds of one at least 150. I'm not seeing anything right now. Like bold in the ass, or did I get stopped? Oh, there's there's the old stop out. All right. So I mean, I played that smart. I knew once this second ice guy got, came in, I got out of half, and then I let half run. I got stopped out, but I still will take shorts if I can see something new come in. Not based on this old stuff now, right? Because we basically we ripped through the, this ice. This ice held. This ice tried to hold it on the sell off, and it worked, right? I'm not going to trade back into this zone now. I'm going to wait for something new to come in. Then I will try to short it again. If we get above these areas, then I'll go long. So that was a good try. Silly me thinking we can sell off in these markets. Tomorrow's going to be a different story. So I may just play these games until tomorrow. But you can see here what's going on. All we're really doing here is we're building balance below balance. This is still bare. If we get above this high volume node, again, I'd say 4235-ish. Forget the 25, the 35, but then I will change my tune. Until then, I'm going to still look for shorts. That one was a good try. I actually exactly scratched, so that was that was good. So I'll just wait for my next opportunity. Um, so what else? Still no questions, Bruce. Another no. market. There's questions just firing at me. Another market that we were calling for weak is was soybeans. Guys, the guys and girls, the same principles go for every futures market. Anything you're trading, actually, stocks doesn't matter. You're looking for balance. You're looking for conviction, and you're, then you're making your you're trying to judge based on how that market is re reacting to that balance, which way you want to trade, right? So what do we have here? Well, this was one monster balance, as you can see. Low, high, low, high. These are traders placing bets. When the longs are wrong, they will puke out their positions. What happened? We moved down, we tried to hold, we came back, tested the bottom, built more balance, gone. Now where are we? We're into the high volume node. HVN is high volume node. High volume node is just where in the middle of a balance, it's an area, it's not an exact price where most of the trade occurred. So if we do this, 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 you can expect the market traded the most in the middle. It's kind of like a point of control on the market profile, right? So that's where, what do we do here? We took a straight, we've been call, I would call this short from up here and we finally did it. And now this is an area where this could bounce, right? Not that I'm just like, this looks just like gold, right? And not that I'm bullish this market, but if you're short, this is an area you want, where you want to consider getting out of your trade and you could play for a bounce if, if the other stuff aligns, right? So if I get number one, I need a volume signal with my book map, book map volume and my SI indicator, right? My threshold in beans is over 150 ice. So I have still not seen anything. This was from overnight, this zone here. I'm going to actually get to delete that because we mm -hmm. traded up and through it. Uh, so let me delete that. So now I'm just waiting for something. I'm not going to go short this market again right here because, again, we made a full. I sell one five zero. This is a straight move away from this balance. We're far enough from this guy. We're not going to get run over, guys puking, right? We gap down. We're all the way down here, and we're far enough from this guy now, too, where this doesn't, you know, this was the puke. So you're far enough away where I don't want to get short this until we can get through this high volume note, kind of like ES. If we can get it back above that high volume note, I'll look for longs. If we can get through this, then I'll look for shorts, and then it's going to be ugly. We keep saying free beans in the room because this thing looks so bad, but that hasn't happened yet. And you can see what's probably going to happen here is we're either going to just bounce straight back up to this balance and then fail or build balance here and then rip down lower. So if that starts happening, I will reconsider being long, but right now I'm going to look for a long for a bounce at least back up into this area. And Beans is notorious for the bounce. What is firing off? Let's take a look here. <clears throat> and Q, I don't want to trade that. Russell, we didn't see any other thing in that gas iron, so we're going to just end it here. Okay. 
this is All right, so now, now I just wait, right? I'm, I'm not gonna go long. If I say if I got a long setup here, I'm not going long this market. I wanna just wait and see how it reacts here. If we get back above 30, 35, then I'll look for longs because then that will be a fail breakdown. Right? What's a fail breakdown? Failed breakdown. Didn't couldn't hold. We put in a buying tail. If it gets above this high buying node, that is a failed breakdown. Now all the shorts are going to be the ones covered. See how that works? But until that happens, I'm still leaning short because markets can remain in their state and still test certain areas of balance areas. The low is one, buying node is another. If you can get above there, then I'll change my thesis. Until then, I'm still looking for shorts especially because all we're really doing now is just building more balance. So let's see what happens here. If this can do that, you'll be breaking out of a current balance through the high volume node. That'll be a great long. We're probably going to rip another 20, 30 points higher. If this holds and breaks down here, it's going to be a great short. This is kind of no man's land right now in ES, right? We're just approaching the top of this balance right now. So I'm still looking for shorts in that market until proven otherwise. Uh, let's see. Any any requests for certain markets that would like me to go over? Crude is ridiculously uh, bullish. Um, it looked like it was, I still think short term, this is going to break down at least to, you can see here, this has just been for a year, basically, straight up, but it's just balance. Let's, let's look at this here. Here's an example of a fail breakdown, right? Balance, tried to break down, couldn't do it. Came back, built balance, gapped up through the high volume node, built balance above that, gone, right? So that was the start of that, this big balance. This was multi-week balance area. So that was telling you something was up when this failed, it couldn't break lower. Then we just started forming smaller balances and breaking higher balances and breaking higher. See this? Balance, pull back to what? The top, higher, conviction. So gaps are conviction too. This is the regular trading hours. That's where the gaps are. Gaps from the day to day, gaps are considered conviction as well. Broke higher, built balance, built small balance, broke higher, balance, retested the high of this, higher, built balance, try to break down, Put in a buying tail through the high buying note of these guys, higher, balance, higher. And now we did this and then we did this. And this actually violated this high buying note of this current one. And now we're just building balance here. So what I think is one of two things is going to happen here. We're either going to hold this because markets tend to defy normal principles when they're ex extreme in one way. This is obviously extremely bullish. So what this should have done, normal markets do this and fail and get through the high buying note. It does that. This is so bullish, it, instead of doing that, it just started to build new balance here, right? So if this breaks out of this, I'll go long. If this breaks below here, you could consider a short because this is really nothing. This was a smaller balance and the bigger balances are down here that we're probably gonna move to for. And again, this market doesn't mean I'm gonna be bearish this market, but I think we could you could take shorts for moves back into these high volume nodes of these guys here. And that's what I'll look for. But we're in no man's land right here. We're just building balance right here. I'm favoring that to happen, but this can easily happen. Again, this is probably gonna be short-lived and it's still gonna do that. So, meaning I wouldn't blame you if you said, you know what, I'm not looking for any shorts. I'm gonna just wait for this thing to break higher and then, then take longs. I would not blame you for that whatsoever. I'm just giving you guys different options to come up with your own ideas and of what you're seeing here. Um, <clears throat> you can see here on Gold Algo Guy, also, uh, so coffee is requested trades, like take, said, take, take a look at coffee. Up when I was long and I didn't cover because I wasn't paying attention to it, we did this and we could not pull this blue above. And the minute it gets back below the red, that's when the algos kick in and trade the minimum moving averages and it pushed it all the way down low and stuff. Now it's an exit. But we can't, once this can clear here, 
then that's going to be in our favor for long as well. And then you have the algos pushing it up too, as long as you can get the blue back above the red. So I'm watching that because I do want to take a shot at a long here in gold. If first and foremost, I get a volume signal. So I'm going to delete this zone from earlier. Um, show you what that was because we traded through it a couple times. And I get questions all the time. When do you, when do you delete your zones? Uh, it was like 200 by a second. I don't feel like searching for it here, but I'm going to show you overnight where I wanted to get short and I actually was leaving for my hotel room because it was so hot in my house and I didn't put the trade on and it was a monster winner. I'll show you what I saw there. Let me delete these zones. All right, so we got a fresh slate here. So I'm just looking for something bullish to come in. But anyway, last night, I've had this running since Globex. So we were breakdown mode, obviously, out of that balance area, those balance areas I just showed you. Where is this at? Right here. Yep, right here. I was literally walking out the door, and this happened. And I saw this setup. We had a stop run. And I said this, I bet you any money, this is a dumb and dumber. Meaning stop run, dumb money puke, and then it fails and it does that. And I was going to put the trade on, but I've been burned lately trading overnight because the trade's been so bad. And plus, I can't monitor like new setups, obviously, because I'm sleeping. And it's been hurting me because the setup will happen and I miss it. And then I wake up and it's I'm stopped out. So I And I wasn't going to be home last night, so I'm like, I'm not taking this short. And then look what happened. <laughs> That's funny. All you can do is really laugh. Can you? Look at that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it's not done. No, yeah, that's what I missed. All because my, I, I would have put that on if I was in front of my, if I could stay in front of my computer and I, cause I, all because my air conditioning went out, I just lost like five air conditionings by not trading that. Prop trading room, Scott. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's quite upsetting. It was really nice to see when I, this morning when I looked at that, but that move was, let's see, yes. I was waiting for that exact pullback. So this is not, uh, this is just a 24 hour chart. All this did was pull back to this area that it ripped down through, right? You had this. And then so you can make this one big one too, right? All we did is pull back to there and that was a signal. And then that, I don't know if anyone here likes $330 trades, 300 ticks, I, I like that while I'm sleeping. Didn't catch that one though, of course. Scott, yes, can you hear me? Just, yeah, I still think we're going to break. What'd you say, Bruce? Can you can you hear me? Yeah, I think my oh. I turned my volume down because all those NAC gas signals were firing up. Ah, okay, so, okay. What were you saying? Oh, uh, no, you need a prop trading room. So oh. so uh, you can refer to some guys and they'll take the trade for you. Oh, just watch it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day. 20, 20, 24 hours a day. Well, we got that in my trade room. Guys are watching the markets all night, some of them. But yeah, maybe I'll get to the point where guys just put trades on, you know, once you learn the setups and you know market structure, you know, we all think the same way. Like a lot of the guys in the room took that ES short off that original ice and it did break. I mean, it did break 10 points. So the, the, the trade worked, right? This was the first. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a different color just so it's not as confusing to people. But this trade worked. It worked for 10 points. It ran into new ice. That's a new, it's something new that happened. And that's why I covered half of my trade down there. So this trade did work, right? Let's go over this one more time. So guys in the room took this trade. I was watching them. One guy took it aggressively, meaning first break of the zone. He just jumped in. Other guys waited for at least an ATR. Remember four points, this moved. Uh, that was this one here. Was it? No, it was here. Yeah. So this was close enough. It was three and a half points and it came here and this is where I entered, but some guys played that, right? And you got, you got a good move down, a decent move down. And then it just started running in a new buy ice. I mean, it is what it is. You can't, you can't, this is what I tell my room all the time. Once this comes in, you can't ignore just because you want this to go down. You can't pretend this, these new ice zones are, are coming in. You've got to respect them. That's why I started getting out here. I'm like, all right, this one failed, but now this is coming in again. That was this. Like I'll just get out of half here and see what happens. And we went right through. And QI is five seven five zero seven D six five. But what's important here is you guys are understanding if you are using this volume, this volume is the most important. There's nothing more important in trading than real time volume. That's what drives markets. Lines on charts, you know, 
Fibonacci, uh, Bollinger Bands, all this other stuff that everyone uses, that doesn't drive markets. It's how the volume reacts at those areas, right? So that's what you want to see. But if you're if you're looking at this, you know, you're looking at this five minute chart here, which most traders do, right? And and you're thinking that's breaking down. You have no idea what happened here. What did happen here though, right? If you look at this, I should have had this up when I was talking about getting out. I just did it naturally, but this was all this was. This was overnight balance. These are the principles, right? We tried to break out. What do we do? We pulled back to the top of balance. So that is short term bullish. I was thinking we can do this because of everything, the bigger picture. But I can tell you what, if this does this and this builds balance here and then this gets through here, then we're going to get the move. But you can see if you're so first of all, if, you, if you're a normal, you know, just a, a um, chart trader, which 95 percent of traders are, if not more, you may have been out of this area where you're like, you know what, it's it's kind of struggling at the top of this overnight balance. I'm out. But if you have the volume, you know exactly why it struggled at the top of that balance because it ran into multiple icebergs that held it. Don't you like to know why the markets do what they do instead of just saying, ah, that's just trading percentages, probabilities. That's why that's why that didn't work. Well, yeah, trading is probabilities, but you can know why the probabilities worked or didn't work by looking at the real time volume most of the time. This told me that paper was the big money was not ready to let this thing go down yet. They got right over here and then they just stepped it up again and bought it here and then it worked, right? So what I'm saying is you use your real-time volume, number one, most important, with what you know about market structure, right? So I'm watching this. All this is doing right now is basically building a daily balance right now. I mean, a five-minute balance. What happened here on a shorter time frame? Well, this is basically where I stepped out, but what do you see here? One of the principles I've already talked about. We're gonna put Bruce on the spot here because he's seen enough of these. He better know the answer. He's going into the corner. What, what happened, um, Bruce? Well, it, it broke down, but it been, then it bounced off the top. Well, yeah, so it's a false, not, not counting this, so let's not count break, overnight. False breakdown. False, false breakdown, exactly. So not even counting overnight, not that you can predict that here, but once this got through the high volume node of this of this five minute balance, see how this works at any time frame? Once it got through there, gone. This is a fail breakdown, right? So you would have, if you're just trading charts, you could have been out. You would have been out right on the same area, basically that I covered. I covered a little higher. Um, but you can see these these principles, and then when you can layer in the real time volume with the icebergs and stop runs with your your structure principles, you are ahead of. 99.999% of retail traders, period. So this was a fail breakdown at the time. I got stopped out. Now what's happening? This looks like this is going to be telling here now, right? Because when fail breakdowns, this should do this, this should do this, this should do this. For this not to be doing this is telling you something. For this to start to build a bigger balance is telling you something. You got to start to say, hmm, that had every opportunity to rip. Why are we just kind of meandering now? Not that you do anything right here, nothing is proven yet, but my point is, as the day goes on and we build this balance and then say it does this, does this, and then breaks, and then breaks through the overnight. Again, overnight is important until it's not, it's not as important as daily trade, but you get this balance breakdown through the high volume node of the overnight balance, that is going to be an incredible short. You wait for your volume signal, boom. You see how this all works, you put this all together, and it's using some critical thinking, like so many traders, don't want to critical think about what's going on. They want to just buy a zone. I just want an indicator where I buy here. It tells me where to buy. It tells me where to sell. Good luck. You're not going to make it trading. You may do okay for a while, but you're just, as a click trader, I'm telling you, you're not going to make it. You have to use some critical thinking. And this is what I teach in my room. And I'm teaching traders how to understand this stuff and then apply the real-time volume based on what they're seeing. So if you're using critical thinking, you would have said, Hey, fail breakdown. I don't want to be short above the side volume note. Hey, wait a second. How come that didn't keep going? Hmm. I'm going to wait here now. That's interesting. So I'm just going to sit here and wait like a sniper in the weeds. I'm going to wait, see what happens here. If this is unable to do that, which it should have done, critical thinking, what should have happened? That didn't happen yet, right? If this comes down here and breaks, you're like, you've got all the, the um, critical thinking ideas in your head that this is going to be a short because of what didn't happen up here on top of what is happening happening currently. Again, hypothetical hasn't happened yet, but if this does happen, 
you know what didn't happen up here, should have done that on the film breakdown. Now you're breaking down out of balance. Now you're breaking out of the, through the HVN of overnight. That is going to be a great short. And then you can throw in a broken iceberg or a stop and hold one of the five setups, then you're golden and you're going to get the big one. And that's how I trade. And that's my trick. <coughs> well, watch I, also too, I mean, uh, but Scott, I mean, I, I think I reiterate this just about every webinar. I mean, I, I just think it's so important um, that uh, these higher time frame trades that you're, you're looking at, you know, the real time volume and, and um, uh, order book uh, in book map, uh, but you're not scalping here. I mean, you're holding for a much, you're looking for a much, much bigger uh, play. Uh, and, um, uh, you know that that's a re really important distinction here i mean you're in these trades like you you showed your trading view uh account like a, a couple of weeks ago or so like i i just have to reiterate like you're in these trades for like i think your average time was like 14 hours or something yeah because yeah. that, that was that takes into consideration some of my overnight trades as well but yeah i'm i'm in trades like i'm not scalping on purpose so this right. this goes to your exact point right so this was technically when I got out of half, that was technically a scalp, correct? But I wasn't trying the scalp. I wasn't saying, oh, I'm happy with, I'm happy with, with seven points here, I, I'm out. No, I got out because there was a reason to get out and it just turned, turned out to be a scalp. See the difference? But yes, I am playing for, so you heard me say, I was short on this zone when it did this and broke and I saw this come in that broke and I said, I'm going to add to this trade. I was looking for a 30, 40, 50 point move if I was right with three, four, and then add as the new stuff came in. I could add five, six positions on, and that trade would have made my year. It still can happen. It could make my year, right? So by default, it could just turn into a scalp, but I'm not trying to scalp. So this was a scalp. I only took seven points off this half of this position, but I took, but I scalped it because of something that happened in the volume, not because I was happy. Like, you know, I got like some of the guys in the, my room, they don't do it anymore, but they were doing it early on. And they would get a verbal lashing for it. Green is green. Oh, I got out here and I would say, why did you get out? Because I don't like bad trading ideas flowing through my room. You need to explain why you're doing something. Why did you get out right there? Um, I just had a feeling or, uh, you know, I, I like the five points that I got. And I'm like, guys, you're not going to make it as traders if you're just randomly getting out for no reason. So again, meaning scalping for no reason, just because you like your P&L, you're not going to make it. I'm telling you, you may hang around for a while. You will grind yourself down with commissions and not be able to keep up with the algos. I'm just telling you. So you can do what you want to do. You can either, as I tell my room every day, you can do whatever you want to do. It's your money. You want to throw it out the window. You want to put it under the mattress. I, it doesn't matter. But the reason you're in here in my room or listening to these webinars is to learn from my 20 plus years of experience, good and bad. Right. So most of the stuff I'm telling you are mistakes that I've made for 20 plus years. So why not take that, take that knowledge and apply it to yourself so you don't have to go through 20 years of torment and fast track it and model me and what I'm telling you and don't go through that pain and losing money and everything else. So that's what I'm trying to teach about you guys taking scalps and oh green is green and oh, I got out because that was a lower high and stuff like that. No, go get out for a reason based on volume and your structure. That's what you want to trade off of. If it turns into a scalp because of something that comes in, fine. That's just, that's trading. You, you get out for a reason. A reason is not, hey, I like I'm up uh, 1200 bucks and I can pay half my rent this month. That's not a reason. Market doesn't care about your rent. Market doesn't care about your random stop, your bracket order stops that every time you buy, every time you get in the S&P, you're trying to make five, you're risking three points to make five. This, what does this matter to the market? You're going to most times lose the three points because you're just putting it in a random area. If you tell me I, I want to get in the S&P and I'm going three points below an important zone, then I'd say that that makes sense, right? An important volume area, fine. And then I'm looking for five points, fine. I'm fine with that. But just because you only want to lose three points because you don't want to lose money, you're going to lose money over the long run, I'm telling you. So stop doing that and use this stuff to your advantage. Book map. And book map, the SI indicator, I say it every time on, on here, is the most powerful thing I have seen in trading futures in my 20 plus years of trading. And I've been saying it for almost two years now, and then nothing has changed, period. It, it's, you guys, if you don't have, if you're not using this, and there are new, because this is a general webinar, if you're not using book map, this volume stuff, you don't have the whole picture. I, I say it every time I'm on here. I don't care how good you are at reading charts. And, this is a head and shoulders. And this is, even if you're doing what I do and you know, 
I mean, this is not rocket science, seeing balance areas and breakdowns and everything else. Even if you're perfect at that, you still don't have all the information because you don't know what's going on in the volume. You don't know is, hey, is paper taking a stand here, right? You just, it, again, if you're successful just reading charts, just imagine how successful you'll be if you know how to read the volume in your areas of your charts is what I'm getting at. All right, that's my rant. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's funny, Scott. I mean, like, uh, I think we did like an um, interview with you or, um, I, or maybe there was an article and we re-quoted you or something. I mean, years ago, um, uh, before you started uh, using Bookmap, I, I believe, uh, and uh, your your quote was like, you know, it price <laughs> uh, doesn't move price, it volume moves price, or it was something like that. Um, and, um, uh, you know, yeah, yes, I sell one. You, you've, been, one. you've been very consistent with that. Yeah, well, because it's, it's what it is. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no arguments about one structure, right? You can have a different, you can have a different view of structure, right? You can say, like today in the, in the webinar, someone said to me, um, because I pointed out this move in gold, right? Literally, someone in the webinar said this, and they still didn't answer me when I said, when I explained the difference, and he still didn't agree or understand. He's, he said, okay, because I said I wanted to be long this HVN that we just talked about because it was a straight line move basically all the way down into this important area. I look for a bounce, not to there, but I look for a bounce in that situation. His exact words were to me, were to me this was just right before I got up. He said, well, what is the difference between that, that view and the, and, the, and the ES view of a move into the HVN like that? I want to be long is what he said. And I said, because this is a different look. This is, we are immediately below all these caught traders. Remember, not everyone's a day trader. There are plenty of long-term institutions, everything else that are long in this area that are sitting there holding their breath. Even right now, they're holding their breath. Do you wanna stand in the way of this puke playing this HVN? No thanks, no thank you, right? It did hold, and if you did that the first time, yeah, good, great, you got lucky in my opinion, because if you take this trade where you try to buy an HVN, as a balance breaks down, eight out of 10 times, you're gonna get run over because these guys are puking, right? So that that's that's the point. He had a different view of it. I think it was an incorrect view. Granted, it did work this time. And I think, you know, that's negative reinforcement in my opinion, because you take this trade 10 times, you're gonna lose, or eight times you're gonna lose. But he had, you can have a differing thesis, but there's no doubting structure. There's no doubting this is a balance area. There's no doubting this was a fail breakdown. There's no doubting this is structure or balance area. And there's no doubting we were below that and we're building balance below it, which is bearish. You can't, there's no doubting that, right? You can come up with different reasons why, hey, if this breaks above here, I like this tail, I like this balance, like I, I wanna play that breakout and I think we can get through that, fine. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But back to the, the original point is, and there's no argument with me here or telling me that volume isn't the most important thing in the market because I don't care what you're using, including the stuff I'm using, right? Al the algo guy, Ludwig levels, those stuff are minor parts of the big piece. And, and unless the volume is agreeing with those areas, it, it doesn't matter. They're not, they're, it, it's not important. It, you see the difference like that? And I've said that since day one. And that's why I've always gravitated as, that's why I was a scalper because this stuff runs the market. Granted, you can't trade on this dome anymore because it's so fleeting because the algos, but volume is what dictates what's going to happen, not lines on a chart. And that's what I've said since day one, and I'll say it till the day I die. <clears throat> and that might be today in this 95 degree house that I'm in doing this webinar. <laughs> see, what, see what commitment and dedication I have to you guys? 95 degrees in my house right now. It's probably hotter than that. It was 95 when I came back from the hotel and I'm doing the webinar in that heat. And you have a hot coffee there? It's a tea. It's not hot anymore, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm on three hours sleep about. So. But that's the that's the dedication I have to you guys. No, I mean it's just it, such a simple thing uh to understand. Yeah. Um, and I'll look for that quote um, and put it into the chat. But uh, you know, it's just um, you know, it's just so nice to hear such a, a simplistic and true statement like that. Um, uh, so um, 
Uh, yeah, and, and by the way, I'm putting into the chat uh, Scott's <clears throat> information if you want to reach out to him. Um, he's got a course and he's got a trading room, et cetera. Someone's asking about the trading course in here. So uh, the, the links are now in the chat and go to webinar. Yeah, so the core, all the courses are my five course setups that I use with the SI indicator to help you understand how to read the volume in important areas that make sense to you, right? Hopefully, like I don't talk about structure or anything like that in the course. The course is just strictly about how to read the volume setups and apply them to areas. So just, you know, whatever you're using now, if things make sense to you, say you like to trade out VWAP, right? Say you like to trade returns to VWAP, like right now. Well, if you get a great volume setup there, isn't that a much better, higher, higher chance of a bounce than nothing right so guys that trade vwap like they're like okay oh i traded it here oh it didn't work this time that's just trading probabilities yes trading probabilities but i really want to know why that didn't work most likely why it didn't work here is this was a bearish volume setup one of my five setups that ripped right through there right this is all you're doing is enhancing your areas that you already know and or if you want to learn from me and then that's what the trade room's for I, that's what i teach every day is how to read like i'm doing here how to read structure and everything else but the course is based on reading the volume setups um, and then again if you're part of my trade room you get a discount to the course as well so or if you buy the course you get a discount to the trade room so that's all on my website check that out if you guys are interested and then i do mentoring as well s&p 738 um, guys remember so we just talked about structure how that was a fail breakdown how that should have just quickly there's just more and more evidence that this thing is going to break today lower right one bigger picture I, I know i'm focusing a lot on this market we'll look at um, russell too here quickly but below, S &P 700 one by below this look at these tails too look at these i know there's one here but now you got four tails instant rejection instant rejection instant rejection and you got balance below balance that's negative right then on the five minute what do we see we saw the, the fail breakout a breakdown wow that's really bullish right well if it's really bullish then why didn't we rip if this was really bullish and we held the, this balance area overnight high, why didn't we do that? Why, why is this doing this? What's number two? What's number three? Look at the S and P 700 to buy. Okay, so now you got buy ice coming in. So I will short this again. I'm going to delete these zones because it's confusing me and we traded through them. I mean, this last zone here, I'll keep in. Um, let me just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove this metal one. How about that? It's going to make it easier now you see here look at this this is the catalyst if this can't hold i am going to short this market again based on everything we just talked about while this is forming i'm going to show you the other reason i was just showing you here in a second look at this ice that's coming in look at this 2000 almost 2200 buy ice are they going to hold it or are they going to get run over you don't guess that let it show you so let's draw the zone i'm probably going to delete these other zones now just because this is such a whopper there you go because whatever happens here is the way we're probably going to break for the day in my opinion I mean, i'm going to just i'll leave that one i'm going to get rid of this one though because it's again this was a convoluted one anyway it did hold but trust me if this breaks this turns into broken ice this is the catalyst for the more lower move that i've been talking about again the first one we tried didn't work they're coming in again here if they can't hold this I'm going to look for a, at least a four point move below, right? Four points. Let's look at the ATR. There you go. There's your four points. You can even do four and a quarter points. You see that average true range for the five minute period is four points. So you want to adjust your, usually I say three points, but today is four because it's more volatile. So what does that mean? That means I'm looking for a four point move below here. This was at 950 ish. So I'm looking for 550 and move down to 550, a retest fail. Or you can just play half of a standard deviation and enter aggressively if this breaks. So you would go two two ish points, so 750, 725. You can enter there too aggressively because again, you're risking it just doing this and not coming back. 80% plus of the time it will retest, and especially in this market, especially on the short side, you can wait for the retest because it's just what it does. This is the, the defining moment of this market up till now. So let's watch what happens. The other thing I wanted to show you why this is also bearish. We've just talked about like three different reasons. Look at this. Look at the difference in this volume here. See a difference? This means 
there were more market sellers hitting the bids coming up. And this is including, I mean, they're, this incorporates icebergs too, right? Because the icebergs are sucking in the bids. They're basically um, the passive buyers. But this is very telling. We came up to another high and there, we're at negative 4,000. Wait, what? What are you talking about, Willis? Right there. What's that from, Bruce? Um, you better, you better different different strokes. Yeah, there you go. Arnold. So anyway, <laughs> you got you got to keep some comedy in your sure you're going to lose your mind. This is a huge divergence. Another reason why this is probably going to say goodnight if this starts to break down again. So now we wait, right? If this turns around and holds, this will be a Titanic setup. If this if this iceberg holds this area and moves higher, that's fine. I'll just let this. I'm not going long right here. Up above 30, I'll go long. I'll just let this play out because I don't think this is going to hold. I think it's going to do that and then go to zero today. Just kidding. But I do think we're going to break down. Again, so I have my thesis, right? I'm not right all the time. I'm probably not even right half the time as far as I'm probably right half the time. But the point is you come up with your thesis and then you let the volume confirm it. And then you put on a high percentage trade. That's what trading is. It's not 100%. Nothing's 100%. You put yourself in the best position. I just gave you four different reasons why. And then what are we what are we going to do if we break that ice? We're going to be breaking below the yellow lug, which is also confluent with VWAP. That's another reason to be short, right? So that's like six reasons right now. What about Algo guy? What's Algo guy doing? Algo go tried. This is one of the best setups. Well, it actually did pull the blue above, so let's see. And it didn't hold it. That's telling. Let's see if we can pull the blue below and then that. So I'm waiting for that. That this is kind of that's not really giving us anything. What's another What's another thing that you can look at? Well, here's the NYSE tick. What's this showing you? Where have we been at most of the morning? These are the stocks that drive the futures, right? This drive the indexes that the futures are based off of. We've been below zero most of the morning. That's negative. What's ADD look like? Advanced decline ratio. Let's take a look. Again, I don't use any of this stuff in a vacuum. I just use it to bolster my case. So how did this react? Again, these are the stocks that comprise the Dow, but it's still the same stocks, a lot of the same stocks in the ES. So what, what happened here? Look at this divergence, right? Now, what did that look like compared to this? Huh, there's something wrong here, right? We did that, came back to the high. We did that, did that come back to the high? Sure didn't, another divergence, bearish. Do you see, like if you can get so many check marks in your favor, then you put in a high probability trade once you get the real-time volume confirming it. That's what trading is. And here we go. Let's see if we can break down. I'm gonna wait for a retest. I am risking missing this trade because if this just does this, then I'm gonna miss the trade. But I know this market and I know it's probably gonna do this and then it's gonna do this and it's gonna look like I'm wrong and then it's gonna do that. Because I've seen this setup about 4,000 times. <clears throat> Any questions, Bruce? A lot of talking. Uh, for two, three hours yeah, uh, Nick. Nick is actually asking about um, your ES voice setup. Uh, uh, is um, is it saying wheat? Uh, he he because he he's getting. Um, I, I don't know. If, check the settings on it. I guess. Um, no. So it's saying S and I literally. You can draw. You can say whatever you want. You can say heads up. Uh, S and P dummy. You can say you're an idiot. Put this trade on. Whatever you want. There's this. All it's doing is triggering. When there's more than 500 I, a stop run, it'll it'll say it'll text me. That's this. Because you want this because you start to get immune to the voices, right? I'll hear stuff and I don't really hear it, so I always check this to make sure I didn't miss anything. That's the text. The voice will read off and then it. Let's go break through nice buy one. So I'm looking three. for a dumb and dumber on goal. Like if this stop run fails, I'm gonna buy it. I'll show you here in a second. And then you put in this. I learned this from some guys in the room, a couple of really smart traders in there, um, brainiac dudes where they know about the programming stuff. And this is pretty simple, but I didn't know it. You put this in and it will read off the exact size that fires off. So it'll say S and P. Actually, it should say stops here. And then it'll read off the size. And then I have the same thing here. This is probably why it's not like weak because I didn't know, even know I didn't have that in there. There you go. So that just reads off what happened as long as there's over 700 ice that will read it to me. All right, here you go. Now, here's the threat. There's the move away in ATR. 
I will wait for a retest. I am risking missing this trade though. So if you love everything I just talked about, you should have been shorting two points below the zone, but I'm gonna wait for a retest, then I'm gonna wait for a fail, a fail meaning two points or half an ATR below, I will get short and then my stop will go four points above this zone at 15.50. I am risking missing this trade, but if I don't catch this zone, trust me, this is just starting and there's gonna be some new stuff. And you can see here comes the ice again, because they are so immune, every time they buy, they basically are right in this market. So they're just like, ah, oh, we'll just throw some more ice in and be right again. This isn't threshold yet, but I'm watching it. It's close. Yeah, it's close enough. It's 675, I think. Yeah. So this is this is another zone. It's not as big as this one, but it's just something to know. I'm not going to draw that in right now because I'm I want to just pay attention to this bigger zone. This is massive. So just imagine if you're say you're a big trader in a firm and you just bought it right here. What are you thinking? Oh crap, please, this was me. This is how I know this, and this is exactly what I would say. And I would use different words than crap, trust me. I say, please come back, just please come back, I'll scratch a trade, I won't even be greedy, please God. Please just let it come back in my zone, I will get out of this long that I just got run over with. And then I would get filled on some, I put a bunch of offers in, I get filled on some of them, I'd say, say I got it filled on half of them, and then it start to move away, then I'd have to go to the market and that would cause the next move down. That's the whole philosophy behind the retest fail. Again, the problem is, if you wait for that, you may miss the trade. 80% of the time I say it does this, but 20% of the time. So you got to decide as a trader, do you want to be aggressive here or not? I will wait because I know this market, and I also know we're kind of hovering right at the, we call them lugs, so I don't have to say Ludwig levels every time, the lug. I will wait for a retest, and then this is the first target that I'm looking at. You got that, there's just so much going for this short. And back to our structure stuff. Why did that thing not rip? This is exactly what I said was going to happen. Did I not? Oh, nice. I got to look at gold here. There's going to be a good long setup, I think. Um, I said, well, great. That's a great fail breakdown. But wait, why? Why? Wait, why are we doing that? Oh, because we're building balance and now we're going to do that. That's my, that's my thesis. And then I look for the volume to confirm it for the 3,000th time. All right, let's look at gold. SNP I 700 for buy. Hey, what do you know? There's some buys coming in trying to hold the market up. First time for everything. So now if this breaks and I don't get the retest, so this is where it gets a little tricky, right? And I hate this and it seems like it happens every time I'm on these webinars. It's like, yeah, this is a bearish signal, but now you got this that's kind of stopping it like it did the first time. I will still take this short though, because this is massive. And then I hope it does that. For instance, say this doesn't retest and it breaks this, then I'll wait for a retest fail of this area that just came in. Because this was just like the first one we saw earlier, right? We saw the back-to-back -back ice come in. That's this little zone right here. He had 675-ish, a little over 600. And then right after that, here's another. So this is like a thousand right here in this zone. So let's draw this zone. And here's the retest. How did I know? Oh, because I've seen it 4,000 times. So again, I hate fate, like again, because this isn't technically, if this wasn't in a vacuum by itself, this would be bullish, right? So I'm gonna be shorting, if I do short this retest, I'm shorting in front of this, which is lower percentage. It stops by one, five, one. But I'll still do it. Or if you want, you just wait for this to fail, and then wait for it to get to the zone. So one, five, three. That's actually what I'm gonna do, because this is, by one, five, three. I'll risk a couple more points not to be standing in front of this setup that is potentially bullish. So do you see guys, it's not, I want this thing to break, but this came in, I can't help that. So I just gotta to adapt to that. This is what I'll do. I will put on half position here, and if it breaks through this, then I'm gonna put on another full position and then watch this thing free fall about 30 points. <clears throat> So again, half an ATR. QI sell one five zero. Two and a quarter point or, or two, yeah, we'll go two points below the zone. Let's say nine seventy five. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. And QI spy one five zero. So I'm gonna get in at and QI sell one five three. Half a position there, and if it gets through this, I'm gonna. I'm not really looking at Nasdaq because I don't like where this is on the in the structure that we talked about. Oh, I don't want to miss gold. So that's in. Let's see if I get filled on that. If it breaks this lower zone, then I'm going to enter in a full position. I'll have one and a half position. Right. Here's gold. Remember I was saying I'm looking for some buy signals down here. Well, first and foremost, 
you see this liquidity in here, it's been in here all day. They paper needs to get filled first because of course they're always right. See this? So you and can, QI sell one five five. You can bet that they're and gonna QI get filled. Is by one five zero. Oh, no, no, hold on a second. Sorry. Let's draw this zone anyway. You can see the stop run, right? Over two hundred, that's well over threshold for gold. See where it started, see where it spiked down here. And you just go to those bubbles and you draw the bump. I'll change this color to a step color. And then you incorporate all the prices that happened in that spike. That's about right here. There you go. Changes to yellow so we know it's a stop run. It's not, not an iceberg, so I don't confuse myself. Oops, there we go. All right, that's that zone. So this right now is technically, well, let's see what the ATR is. This is going to be huge because this has been all over the place today. Yeah, 30, 37, 37 ticks. This is where you don't trade full size because you got to risk literally 37 ticks below the, and above zones for stops and things like that. So this is bearish setup. I don't want to go short right now. I, even though I, I know this, even this did pull a little bit, I still think this is going to fill. I don't want to go short because where we're at on the chart. If we get through that high volume node, then I'll look for shorts. We just covered this, but I'll show you again quickly. This is a major area. And we had a straight move into it. So I'm not real excited about shorting until we can get through what? The HVN, the high volume node, is an area where the most trade occurred, right? We're still right there. But if we get lower and below this, this is a prior zone I drew some up, we get below here, then I'll look for shorts because this has failed then, right? But I'm expecting some kind of bounce and that's what I'm playing for in this situation. But this is not, this is considered a stop and hold right now, right? I mean, it hasn't gone an ATR below here, but pretty close, it's already 20 plus ticks below the bottom of the zone. Stop and hold, stop run, that holds, and then the big money continues to push it lower. That's what's happening right here, which is bearish. I don't want to go short right here. So I won't let that pass until I see a bullish setup. There's a yes. I did not take, I never got filled on that. This iceberg again held this market. Let's see if it gets above this zone, but I'm not going long this market either. I'm playing for shorts until again, we can get above 42.30 and then I'll play longs. I will still, all this really is now, is a retest of this zone. Again, it's retesting it, did it once, now it's doing it again. Wait, it didn't, did it retest before? No, this is the first retest, right? Yeah, so all this is is first retest. So we want an ATR below this. Remember we said four points, almost exactly. Here's the first retest. Now, if this fails, I will enter half position. If it can get through these guys, I'm gonna go in our full position and watch this thing go to zero. I'm kidding, but today and tomorrow is going to be tomorrow is going to be ridiculous. I think tomorrow is finally where the thing just starts to unwind, but we'll see. Again, that's my thesis. I'm not, I mean, I'm right. I'm coming up with an idea and I'm basing it on structure as well. I'm not just saying, oh, I, I, I think something's going to happen. I'm looking at the charts and our, my structure and saying this should happen. So look at Russell here. I mean, look at this thing. It's hanging by a thread. See this? Didn't draw. Look at this. Balance. Balance. Just below. Do you really think this this guy here, the stuff here, is going to hold this if all these guys puke? No. We're coming down here. So I will short Russell on any kind of signal as well. I don't think we've gotten anything in there. Nothing yet. Now, trust me, it's coming. And then what do I do is I go over to my market profile stuff and my lugs and take a look at that. Let's see what that looks like. This usually draws a lot new lugs. And once it's below the blue, you can see it can't. It, the blue is like the support. Failed, 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 try to get inside, failed at the yellow, failed again. We call this a baby lug. To learn about all those in the room. Failed, failed, failed. It's about to accept in this. I'll show you that. 
this has about eight different reasons why you want to be short this market as well. On a volume setup, not just throwing it in right now. Look at this. What do you see here? This was yesterday. What happened? It tells a story. You use critical thinking in your trading. This was a composite. This was a single day. Yesterday we opened up, tried to get inside, back inside, failed, came down, bounced off this one, failed, bounced off this one, closed right here. Today, try to get inside. No, couldn't even get back to this. Now we're trying to get back inside this. This gets inside this, it's doing this, and then it's doing this. I gotta make, I switched months here, these have to be merged. So this is a perfect example, right? So these three, you see these value areas here? These are single days. Value area, value area, value area. All on top of each other, you merge those, you draw a composite. One, two, this is not 50% inside of this, so I'm not going to merge that one. And then what do I do? I draw my composite. And I'm doing this now because this is where we're going. It might happen today or tomorrow. Tomorrow, probably most definitely. So if we can accept into here, the tendency for markets, once they accept into composite profiles, let's go to the other end. If we get out of this one, we're coming down here. That's what I'm trading for. And then I look for my buying to confirm it. All right, we're somewhere out of gas here. Um, gold, again, this was a bearish setup. I'm not, I don't want to go short yet. I'm looking for buys. We got to let this volume get filled because paper always gets their fills because they run the show. I tell my room all the time, yes, do I believe these markets are manipulated? 100%. Why? Because I've seen it in my career and I see it every day. You're going to get mad about it or what's the what's the adage if you can't beat them join them with this volume stuff you can see what they're doing so join them instead of bitching how, how markets are so manipulated join them know what they're trying to do know where the liquidity is know that they always get their fills if you're short you know this is probably going to go to here you, you know you're going to get long wait for them to get their fills then look for setups look use your volume setups you guys do you see how important the volume is it's the driver of markets and knowing what the big money is doing is key. All right, let's see if I get filled here. I'll stay a little longer. If I can get tortured and he asks for, this is gonna break. It's just gonna torture me for probably a couple more hours. Careful, careful Scott. Every, every time you say that you get filled and you get wrapped into a trade for another half hour. What'd you say? Every time you, you say something like that, <laughs> you, get, you get filled and then you're in it for another half hour. Exactly. Oh, nice. That's the crew just broke. That's what I was assuming, right? Based on that structure stuff. Let's take a quick look here. Remember I said that was a bad area to trade, but I was leaning more on the short side for temporary. And now we're breaking. And I said, it's for rebalance to see what it does. And now here we go, right? And it's, this means this is nothing. You got this little dude. Let's get some yellow in here, right? I think we're coming down to these balance areas down here, 70. 69, 69 and a half, you know, this big tail is, this is probably where we're coming. And then we'll probably, the market's still bullish, but this isn't a time where you can play for pullbacks. Right, let's see if I can fill here. Don't stop. This could be the, hey, look at that. Look who got, look who got their fills, huh? Still over and over, same exact scenarios. So now here's another stop run. It's not that big, but I will go long on it. Let's see here. This could be a dumb and dumber. 153 stop run. There. To there. All right, I'm just gonna address Lido along this market. Again, the lat the least um, the least likely to retest the zone, like I was talking about retest, the golden crew do it all the time, more so than the other ones, but dumb and dumbers just by design are quick pukes of a retail trader gone, right? We know paper got their fill. I'm going to buy a half position here. Don't because that because paper got their fill, because I sit we're in the HVN of the balance area, and I'm, I, I have to go in AT, the reason I'm only trying to have size is because I have to go in ATR below this zone. So that I have to go 36, let's see what the ATR is again, 
36 ticks below this zone for the you're just basing that based on the volatility of the day right so that's 60. there's my stop goes there half position because i have to i'm risking 60 ticks on this trade why am i doing that because i think if this gets motoring up this can move 200 ticks the other way so that's what over three to one on my risk that's what i look for Now what I'll do is if I see new new signals come in, I will add, and then I can. That's when you can start trailing your stop. You don't just trail your stop because you like your P&L. You trail it because of new things that come in. So I'm on that. I never got filled on the ES. Holding on for dear life. Just take a look at it. We can draw, we can draw some sun and NASDAQ if you guys want to trade it, but I, I don't want to trade it here. There was some stuff firing off. There you go, 200 cell ice. What's this? Broken ice, bullish. Broken cell ice. It's one of my five setups. Where did that start? Basically right, where did it spike? Right there? No, because you want to incorporate all the prices that happened in the spike, so that came all the way down to here, right? Then you come basically came up to here. We'll edit these, we'll make it black because I take I usually make cell ice black to help me determine. Not that it's again, you're not saying paper is always right. It's the area that's important, right? And like this instance, paper is not right. The cell ice was not right. Did I get all those prices? Yeah. I'm going to show you how they got run over. There you go. This paper right there, not so much. That's a bullish setup. But I'm not, I don't want to go, I'm not even trading this market in the areas. We've already gone over it. <clears throat> so, but that's the ice. So if you wanted to get long, you're trading off this. You say, hey, you've got my volume set up. I want to be long. Moved away, retested, gone. I don't know if that was a full ATR. Let's check the ATR here. I mean, does this look like a bearish short-term setup in here? No, it looks completely bullish, right? What do we do? Overnight, balance, broke out. No balance here, broke out. More balance here, broke out. The broken ice just got run over on a breakout of a balance area. So that's, that's what I'm saying, right? So say this would have held. Say this didn't break and this would have helped. That's a Titanic setup when it runs into an iceberg and holds, right? That would have been holding and running into a cell iceberg. Would I have shorted that? No way. Do I want to short on breakouts of balance areas? No, that's what I'm saying. You don't trade anything in a vacuum. Book map volume is number one, but I would not be trade, I would not be shorting that. This is these are traders that for the last two hours that are in this area that are puking. Why do I want if it does this, then I'll go short. Or I would potentially, and I don't want to short here based on the bigger picture, but I'm just giving you guys examples. So that this is a very example how you wouldn't short this market right here, even if this ice held. Doesn't mean it can't go down, it just means the odds are against you because you had all you have all those traders that are puking. All right, so this is um so if this goes four, this will basically be violated because we went four points or five, we did an ATR below. If this gets four points below here, then this whole thing is violated. I'm gonna cancel this order. It's not a bearish setup anymore. So we're looking at 16, this needs to trade up to 16, I'm sorry, 1550. That was the top of this zone here. If this holds and comes down, this is still intact because I didn't get an ATR above this zone. So I will still consider this broken ice, right? Again, if you guys are confused, you're not gonna learn this in a day, all these setups and all the terms, that's why Join the chair trade room, get the course, fast track your learning. I mean, there's guys that join the trade room that try to learn it in there, and you could, you will, but it's not gonna, you're not gonna learn it. Your learning curve is gonna be much longer because I don't, you know, it's not like I'm educating on the exact courses, the setups every day. I'd say like I'm doing here, but it's gonna take you longer to learn, is what I'm saying. All right. So this is not working. Again, much lower, I'll start looking for shorts in, in gold. I'm giving this a chance to bounce off that high volume now. 
Let's look at the, uh, we did not look at as the lugs, and it's one of my very important reasons for trading our areas. Yeah, this is a great, this is what you look for. This is a good long area. We get the setup, we know it's the HVN, we get a lug. These are so powerful, right? If this fails, then fine. It's still a high, high percentage trade. Sell one, five, three. Right? I'm looking for that. If this fails, then fine. I'm taking a high percentage trade. That's what trading is. And I had the volume to confirm it. Some more big sell ice here. Probably the biggest of the day. It's over 200. It's still coming in. We'll mark this zone too. Let's see where this is. And QI sell 150. Every time I try to get off and something comes in. There we go. Try to get off the webinar. Yeah, I mean, this is not, I'm not shorting this market. Look at this thing. This is a, talked about this. This held this dude, buying tail, a little balance here. And you had pretty much a balance there. And this is a fail breakdown. I don't want to short that. I'll short it if it does that and gets below some of these areas. I'm not shorting this, even if this iceberg holds. The way you should be playing this is looking for broken ice. This was the trade. I wasn't looking at that chart. This can be traded to the upside. I was thinking we were still down in this. I was thinking, because I didn't look at this longer term chart, I was thinking we were still in here somewhere. We're through that. This is a fail break now. That's bullish. So I would have taken this trade here, whatever. But now you have another chance here. Here's more sell ice. Let's mark this zone and possibly go long off this. I already have my colors set up. There you go. There's the ice zone right there. <clears throat> ATR is 21 points. That's not fun, but it is what it is. Hourly ATR is. Sixty-eight points, so say seventy points. So you can go twenty percent of that. That's fourteen points. So if you can go fourteen, if you if you don't want to risk twenty, you can go fourteen. So meaning what? Meaning I need to see this go fourteen points above here for this to be an official broken ice. Meaning this ice got run over, and then you look for a pullback retest go. Again, sometimes it doesn't pull back, so you got to decide: do you want to be aggressive or you want to wait for pullbacks? You don't know what this is yet until this breaks away and retests. I'm assuming based on the charts, let's look at the lugs. See what just happened there. More bullishness. Oops. Broke that. Form new lugs, that's bullish. I think that's the yellow right there. And now we're above the yellow. And we're, if you get a bullish setup, this is the target. Completely bullish. Russell Ice 150 to buy. Let's check out that ESJ. I might cancel in that order, obviously. Yeah, so this is canceled, right? So do you see how having this information, so if you got short in the next move, you're like, yeah, this is it, this is where it's going. You don't know that this happened. And you, like, I was ready to short this thing. This popped in, so I'm like, I'll wait. I'll wait and see what happens here, and I'll wait for it to get the blood never filled me, and then I'm not in the trade. All based on volume. If you don't have volume, you're just guessing. You don't have all the information. You can argue with me that you're blue in the face. You do not have all the information. This still doesn't look as this doesn't look like this is still just form a balance. Whatever way this breaks is going to be the move for today, right? Yeah, fine. I'll get long above these areas if I see more balance built, and I'll do that. I was expecting that to break, didn't happen yet. Let's see what happens. There's some, uh, yes, this is back to the entry. Never got below there, never set me out. I think this thing's gonna rip as it adds new new signals, new setups. I will add and then I will trail my stop based on the new setups. Any questions before I hop off here? 
Uh, no, I've been uh, answering uh, the questions in here, so uh, I think we're uh, I think we're all good. Device five one five zero. Bias coming in in this zone here. <clears throat> so again, this this looks the most bullish from all. You wait for a move away. You could just play it on a move away. Half an ATR. You can be aggressive. Seven points above the zone. Eighty nine and a half. Or you can wait for a um, 14 point move away, retest, go. And up to that red lug that we were looking at. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to do. That will be, again, if you do that, you risk miss, missing the trade if it just goes a straight beeline move. So that's the, you have to decide that as a trader, how risky it would be. All right, Bruce, that's it. Uh, so, again, I'd be looking for longs, more longs than gold, long setups, again, based on the volume. In um, soybean, soybean threshold is 150. It's not bouncing yet, but there hasn't been anything yet to even trade it. That's keeping me out of trouble, right? So I have a long thesis, but waiting for real-time volumes keeping me out of the free fall right now, right? Because I haven't gotten anything volume-wise. Another reason why you need volume, because if you if you know this and you're a balanced expert and you say, this is a great trade, this is a straight line moving in here, I'm gonna get long. Okay, well, you're, you're eating it right now, I'm not eating anything because I didn't get any setup. So I'll let this thing free fall some more. I don't care. And when I get my setup, then I'll go long, right? You could, this, HVN is a zone. So where are you getting long? 22, how's that tasting right now? 17 points in your face, just trading alpha HVN. There was no setups here. This one was close, but this was broken ice anyway. That was, yeah, it was, that was 130, but I would even that. That's not bullish, that's broken ice. Here's the retest, look at that. Just waiting for a setup. This is close. What is this? Yeah, 115. So it'd be nice. This is still broken ice right now. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, what do you know, Bruce? About to hop off, and here comes a huge iceberg. I mean, who are you, got, are you guys trading off of this? Is that why you did this? Do we have huge <laughs> traders in here throwing in some icebergs. Look at that. Right with. Here you go. This is the signal. Let's draw the zone. And it's unbelievable. I can't, I just can't. I can't. I can't get left. Look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. Movie, Bruce? I don't Bruce know. Too, being old. Look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. I can't get left. You do not know this quote? Oh, you're, you're European vacation. There you go. Okay, nice. that was a good today. guess. Good guess. <laughs> oh, because someone typed it in. Did you cheat? No, 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 no. I, I, I guessed. I, that was a guess. <laughs> Uh, Very good. Two for two. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <clears throat> so if this breaks, that's bearish. Am I going short? No. I don't want to go short. I'm looking for this to hold and I will long. <clears throat> so let's give this a second. What do you do next? Check the ATR. So let me see how much we have to risk. Where is my? Oh, I found that quote a uh, long, long time ago. Uh, interview with you. Uh, volume drives the market, not the price. Oh, yeah. Wait, when, that was about two years, three years ago, right? Yeah. So the ATR is thirteen. So you do twenty percent of that. That's what two point six. Yeah, two point six. And then I like at least three. So let's look at the uh, in beans. Especially a day like today, it's a little more volatile. Let's see what it is on the five minute. Yeah, three. There you go. It's three cents. So this needs, if this goes over three cents below this zone, then that's going to be broken ice. If it can hold here, once it gets three cents above, that'll be a Titanic. Right? So we don't know what this is yet, is what I'm saying. Okay. Core nice sell one six five. Again, if this does this, that's broken ice, that's bearish. It should do that and that. I'm, I don't want to go short for the reasons I said. The last thing we need to check, which we should be checking right away, market, because it's so powerful. Where, where the lug is telling me, and the market profile. Here's market profile. Where are we at? Accepting back into this zone. 
tendency is to get to the bottom, so this could make a swipe down there. No swiping swiper. You probably don't know that, Bruce, because you don't have kids, do you? Do you have kids, Bruce? No. No, no swiping swiper. I guarantee half the people on here know what that is. It's from Dora the Explorer. Um, anyway, <laughs> we're below the we're below the yellow lug. Uh, we are coming to the two standard deviation of VWAP of um, the daily value area. So this is VWAP. This is negative one, negative one and a half, negative two. There's lots of elbows that play off that. That will be confluent with the bottom of this, but that's just not right here. It's about three cents lower. So I, I'll still take the long, but that stuff's not. All right, so we actually, this is this is bearish. I'm not taking the setup now. Right? Oh, nice, by 414. We went an ATR below this zone. Uh, what I would like to see is just come down here and see another one of these pop in here, and then I'll go along, but this one is now no longer valid, so I will not play this as a bullish setup because we violated it, right? This is done. Doesn't mean if it does do that, it could, I've seen it, doesn't happen very often. So I'm trading things I see very often. I need to see a new setup, and I'd like to see it down here. I'd love to see another 200 mile iceberg come in here to get long, because then that would be confluent with all this stuff at least not on the lugs, but with the um, close enough to the blue lug. It doesn't have to touch the blue lug either, right? That's actually a, a sign. I did an interview with her. It's in my, I record all my webinars in my trade room, but I did an interview with her explaining some of the stuff. And that's actually a sign if it can't get down to the blue. And once it gets back above the yellow, that's a, that's a uh, bullish signal too. But this is, you got a lot of stuff aligning here. You got the um, two standard deviation VWAP. You got the bottom of this profile composite. If I get a signal now, a new one, I will still go long. But I'm not playing off of this one because this was violated. This is actually broken ice. So if you really want to short here, you wait for this. This was an ATR. Here's the retest. Half an ATR, you get in and you play it down here. I don't want to get short. I don't think this has much more room to go on the downside. So I'm not, I'm just looking for longs right now. All right. I'm not going to wait for that to happen though. So um, <clears throat> let's see. Gold's just sitting basically right at the entry, pretty close. What happened with NASDAQ? Did not get an ATR above there, but we got to have it. We're looking for 14 points, so we need to see it trade up to 96. That didn't happen yet, but this is looking like it's going to be broken ice as well. That's bullish. And then finally, yes. This zone is now basically invalidated. We traded down below it and above it. These guys are going to end up being right as usual. I will look for longs in ES above 42.30. You can go long NASDAQ now. Russell's, I don't really want to take longs there. I explained that earlier. So kind of mixed, guys. It's probably just going to bounce around today. Tomorrow's a huge, huge day. It's probably going to be very, very, very volatile. Um, but I'm looking for a breakdown, so we'll see. Gold starting to move our way. I got a round at TPC right now. Now a round in a couple of beers. Should I get out, Bruce, and just go play golf? Uh, oh, that'd be, that'd be great. Well, not, not really, because it's 115 degrees here. So, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, okay. Yeah, I, not, not, not now. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. I'm out of gas. Um, hopefully, you guys learn. If you want to learn more, come to my trading room. That's awesome. There's really good traders in there. If you want to learn the setups, get the course, you get discounts from the trading room, blah, 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 blah. You know, you know the drill. Thanks for having me, Bruce. And uh, any you guys have questions, shoot me an email. Um, that's about it. Any other questions, okay. let me know. If not, I'm going to hop off. Yeah, no, sounds good. Uh, thanks, Scott. Thanks so much. Uh, and um, we'll, uh, we'll see you next Thursday. Uh, stay. Uh, uh, cool there if you can. Uh, hopefully you get that all fixed and uh, you get back to <laughs> the AC. Yeah, trading's hard enough if you're not pouring sweat and feeling like you're going to faint. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care, Scott. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.